Hello, and this is some help with problem number two from assignment number 16. I'm not entirely sure that my numbers are going to equal your numbers, but here's the process. So we're given some good information here. Um, I apologize for bumping around a little bit, I think. Um, if we can look at this, this is the raw data up here. And we notice that there are four conditions, that there are three display panels, and within each of those combinations of condition and display panel, there's two replications. That tells us that m is equal to 2. m will be the number of replications. Now, as for whether or not a is equal to 3 or a equals 4, it doesn't really matter, as long as you're consistent. So we scroll down, and we see tabulated statistics, panel. So the first question comes down to, the question is panel b requiring more or less time to stabilize the emergency condition. So which of these is panel B? B? 18.25 is the average. That's less than all the others, so it's going to be less than. We are given that F int is equal to 0.66. That's F of the interaction is equal to 0.66. P value is 0.681. Now because P is greater than alpha, we cannot reject the null hypothesis. Therefore, there is no significant interaction. Another way of saying that is we do not detect interaction. B. We need to now test the significance of display panel effects with alpha equals 0.05. We're given f equals 26.49. Okay, panel effects, degrees of freedom. So here, I guess a is going to be 3. Sums of squares, mean squared, f is 26.49. We're given the p value is 0 0.000. Because p is less than alpha, we reject the null hypothesis we conclude that there is an effect due to display panel. C, test the significance of emergency condition effects with alpha equals 0 0.05. Condition effects, degrees of freedom is 3, so n equals 4, or I guess in this case it's going to be b is equal to 4. Sums of squares, mean squared, f statistic is 100.80, p-value is 0 0.000. Since p is less than alpha, we reject the null hypothesis, conclude that the emergency condition is not the same across the four options. We're on to d now. The first part of d is to find out what Tukey's q sub 0 0.05 is in this case. To determine that, we go to table a.9, which is on page 868, or at least it starts on 868. The one on 868 is for Q of 0.10, so that won't be the right one. Uh, page 869 is for Q of 0.05. Okay, that works. Along the left side is the degrees of freedom. Along the top is R. R is the number of groups. In this case, it's going to be three. The three groups for part D, or section D, is A, B, and C, so that's 3. And then for the degrees of freedom, it's going to be 12. It's 12 because A times B times N minus 1, which is 3 times 4 times 2 minus 1, gives us 12, the degrees of freedom. So looking at our table, degrees of freedom, the what looks like a V, down to 12, across to so the R is 3, we get 3.77. And I've, I have an Excel spreadsheet opened up just so you can read my handwriting. I put 3.77 right here. We're also given on that problem that the mean squared error is 4.13. Looking at the table itself, however, we can see that the mean squared error actually is, not there, actually is, 4.125. So that's where the book gets the 4.13. They rounded it a bit. Okay, now in order to calculate that confidence interval, a Tukey simultaneous confidence interval, we use the uh, 
orangish box at the top of page 472. Um, step C, um, or we could use, so, uh, that's 1C, or we could use 2C. They're the same thing. You just have to determine whether you're using A and B or B and A, uh, using A's or B's. For C, look at its x bar 1 minus x bar 2, plus or minus that distributional multiplier, in this case it's 2 keys q, times the square root of some sort of variance, in this case it's a mean squared error, times some sort of uh, 1 divided by the sample size. And that should look familiar because it's the form of the confidence intervals from ever since we started doing confidence intervals. I guess I should say ever since you started doing confidence interval. So looking at A and B, or comparing A and B, and on the on the website it's U A minus U B. That really should be a mu A minus a mu B Greek letters. So we're gonna do X bar A twenty one point five. We got that from the problem. X bar B of eighteen point two five, so that just clarifies some things. A in this case is gonna be four because there's um, four emergency conditions, one, two, three, and four. B is three. There's three display panels, and M is two. There's two replications in each. The MSE is 4.125, but they tell us it's 4.13. The formula, I, I wonder if I can make that big. I can make that pretty darn big. Is going to just echo 1C. It's going to be the difference in the sample means. And since this, since this is the upper, we're going to add, add that distributional multiplier which in this case is 3.77 times the square root of the mean squared error times the square root of 1 divided by b times m um, or 1 divided by b divided by m and the lower is going to be exactly the same except this plus is going to be replaced by a minus so here it is just replace that plus with a minus. And boom, boom. There we go. And so we get our answers of 5.95877 and 0 0.54123. We're supposed to round that, I believe, to two decimal places. So what you'll put in will be 5.96 and 0 0.54. Well, the 0 0.54 will come first because we have to have it in correct order. Now, if we're going to do it with comparing A and C, what changes, X bar B is going to change. Um, the mean for C, and I'm looking at the, the problem itself, the mean for C is 25.63, maybe? 25.63. A, B, M, M, S, C, and Q are all the same, so this will be our upper and lower confidence limits. Again, remember lower comes first because numerical. So it's and two decimal places you're supposed to round to. So be a negative six point eight four to a negative one point four two. And so really this is C, so all we have to do to do the third part is B and the mean for B is eighteen point two five. And so the 95% confidence interval will be between negative 10.09 and negative 4.67. Same formula, the only thing that changes each time is just the means on top. Now that was for the A, B, and C, the panels. If we're going to do the same thing for the condition, we're going to be focusing on the A as opposed to the B. And we're going to have a different Tukey value because the number of groups is no longer 3, the number of groups is now 4, which means the Tukey value, still 12 degrees of freedom, still 0 0.05, it's going to be 4.20. That's going to change. Mean squared error is going to remain the same. Let's look at x bar 1 and x bar 2. x bar 1, according to the printout, 
is 17.17. 17. X bar 2, according to the printout, is 24.50. Now remember, we do have to change the formula down here. Because this formula multiplies A and B, we need it to multiply, I mean, this formula multiplies A and M, we need it to multiply B and M. So instead of B5, we're going to replace that with B6. And same thing with this one, the B5 will be replaced by B6. And that will be our two key confidence interval for 1 and 2. From negative 10.81 to negative 3.85. So it's really just a matter of applying that formula in 1C and making sure that you get the right numbers in there. I mean, well, I guess that's all that this sort of thing is about. So that was uh, E, and you'll just have to switch the 1s and 2s around up here and read off down here. Um, F returns to the, the output at the top. It's asking which of the three panels, A, B, and C, has the lowest mean. We already answered that, B. And now the question, the, the important question is, does it depend upon the emergency condition? In other words, it's asking, is there an interaction between the panel and the emergency condition? Because the p-value corresponding to the interaction is greater than alpha, no, there is no interaction. If this p-value that I'm pointing at was greater, I mean, was less than alpha, then we'd say yes, there is an interaction. That means it, both panel B and the condition affect the effect of panel B. And finally, problem G is very similar to problems um, D and E, except for G you're just looking at a single, um, uh, a single, uh, an individual confidence interval, which means you're going to use the formula for B, 1B, or again 2B, depending on how you're looking at it. So let's go ahead and work through that. Um, we need it to stabilize emergency condition 4 and display panel B, so let's input that data. So going back to what information we're given, it's emergency condition 4 using display panel B. So it's going to be 4B, so 9.5 will be the expected value. And now let me just clarify, I, I think I said the wrong formula. I think I said 1A or 1B or something like that. It's actually formula 3 in that peach colored box. So we brought that information from what we were given and put it in our Excel spreadsheet, um, at least this part. Um, 9.5 is the value um, in um, emergency condition 4 display panel B, 9.5. Um, A, B, and M I just transferred over from here. We're not going to need A and B, actually, because if you look, the formula 3 just requires M which is 2. It does require the mean squared error. This t of 0 0.025, we get that from table A4. Um, it's a two-tailed test. Alpha is 0 0.05. So 0 0.05 divided by 2 is, point, is that 0 0.025. Um, t distribution does also need a number of degrees of freedom. And that number of degrees of freedom is the same as before. It's A times B times M minus 1. 4 times 3 times 2 minus 1 gives us 12. So that 2.179 is the t distribution for degrees of freedom 12 and probability 0 0.025, 2.179. So we just use the formula that's on page 472. For the upper, it's what we observe plus our distributional multiplier times the square root of the mean squared error divided by m. And for the lower, it's exactly the same except it's minus. It's so what we observe minus the distribution times the square root of the mean squared error over m. And so again, since I believe it needs to round to two decimal places, the lower will be 6.37 and the upper will be 12.63.
And again, realize that your numbers here may be different from my numbers. Therefore, my answers will be different from yours, but the ideas are exactly the same. Just have to figure out how to take the numbers that are given to us here and put it into the formulas. Formula 1C is going to be for the Tukey stuff, and Formula 3 is going to be for confidence interval for a single outcome. I hope this was a little bit helpful for you. I know it's probably kind of long, but...